Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artists by Mike Venezia Monet Claude Monet was born in Paris, France. In 1840, he was a great artist and helped invent an important style of painting called Impressionism. Many of Monet's paintings are pictures of water. Boats, oceans, ponds, and lakes were some of his favorite subjects. Claude Monet loved the way colors reflect in water and the special way that water makes the clouds and sky look. Monet even fixed up a boat as a floating studio. He kept paints, brushes, canvas, and drawing supplies on it. Monet sailed up and down rivers and streams, stopping to paint wherever he liked. It must have been fun. When Claude Monet was little, his family moved to, from Paris to the town of Le Havre, which is right on the sea. At Le Havre, ships from all over the world stopped to pick up supplies for their long journeys. Monet's father owned a grocery store that sold supplies to the sailors and shipping companies. Claude must have seen a lot of very interesting people while he was growing up. Claude Monet had a good sense of humor, but he didn't do very well in school. He never listened to anybody and spent most of his time drawing funny pictures. He even drew funny pictures of his teachers. Claude became very good at drawing these pictures. When he was a teenager, some people, who also had a good sense of humor, paid him to draw pictures of them. Claude liked making money by selling his drawings. He kept on drawing until a well-known local artist convinced Claude he should try painting. Eugene Baudin had some new and interesting ideas about painting that Monet liked. Baudin thought artists should paint outside, not in stuffy studios like most artists did during Monet's time. Monet loved the idea of painting outdoors. In 1862, he left Le Havre to study art in Paris. There he met other artists. Monet made friends with Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and Frédéric Basile. He showed them how much fun it was to paint outdoors. Monet and his friends often painted together in the countryside. After the invention of oil paint and tubes, it was easier for artists to carry their supplies around and paint outside. Before that, artists had to mix their own paints in jars with colored powder and oil. It was a messy job. There were some problems with painting outside though. Sometimes sand and other things stuck to the wet paint. Monet wanted his paintings to become well known so that people would buy them. Almost the only way he could do this was by having his paintings shown at the Great Salon in Paris. The Salon was a place where people came from all over the world to see what the best artists were doing. It wasn't easy to get a painting into the Salon. The few judges picked only the paintings they liked. Monet entered his paintings often. Sometimes they were accepted and sometimes they weren't. Women in the Garden was one of the Monet's paintings that didn't make it. Monet used his favorite model for all four women in this painting. Her name was Camille. Claude Monet and Camille fell in love and got married a few years after this painting was finished. Monet often used Camille and their children as models. This is a painting of Camille and their first son, Jean. The great salon wasn't paying much attention to Monet and his friends, so they decided to have their own show. They wanted people to see how exciting their colorful outdoor paintings were, but the show didn't work out very well. 
People in Paris in those days wanted to see paintings that told a story about some important battle or historical event. They were used to paintings where everything looked clear and sharp. And they liked dark, moody colors, like the colors in the painting here. Monet and his friends were more interested in how pretty something looked when the sunlight was on it. They liked to paint ordinary things, like a boat on a lake, or rocks by the ocean, or even haystacks in a field. A newspaper man called these artists Impressionists. He got the name from Monet's painting, Impression, Sunrise, seen here. Even though people were not crazy about Monet's Impressionist pictures, he kept on painting them. He thought it was important to show scenes of everyday life, and he tried to make the colors, shadows, and light in his paintings as real as possible. Monet was even able to show steam and dampness coming from a train engine. If you take a very close look at some of Monet's paintings, you can hardly tell what he painted. It just looks like a bunch of colorful brush strokes. But when you step back a little, it all starts to make sense. It's easy to see that the colorful brush strokes on the previous page are really the two ladies walking along a cliff in the painting above. The exciting brush strokes and colors in Monet's paintings give you the feeling of being right there at the moment he made the painting. Monet wanted to get as close as he could to the things he was painting, no matter what the conditions were. Sometimes he had to tie his easel down so that the waves wouldn't wash his painting away. Monet often painted many pictures of the same thing. He wanted to see how sunlight changed the look of something at different times of the day or at different seasons of the year. When Monet was older, people finally started to appreciate his paintings. He settled down in the French town of Giverny and built a wonderful water garden there. Claude Monet lived to be 86 years old. He spent the last 10 years of his life painting scenes of his water garden. These paintings are among the most beautiful and famous paintings he ever did. Some of them are over 40 feet wide. Monet was able to show how things looked at the moment he saw them, almost like a camera does. He loved nature and he painted with colors so that the scene would look as much like nature as possible. He was even able to paint mist and fog and make it look real. It's a lot of fun to see a real Monet painting, especially up close. You'll be surprised by how many different colors you can see and how simple Monet's brush strokes are. The paintings in this book came from various museums some in Chicago, Cleveland, Ohio, the Louvre in Paris, New York, Massachusetts, Washington, D.C., Munich, Germany, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Hartford, Connecticut. If none of these museums are close to your home, maybe you can visit one when you're on a vacation. The end.